Hello everyone, welcome to NPTEL course on Rural Water Resources. This is week 9, lecture 2. In this week, we are looking at how to manage rural water resources using engineered infrastructure. The whole idea is we have been seeing that rural water issues are there, a lot of water is mismanaged and infrastructures are absent to capture excess runoff or aid groundwater recharge. On that note, in the last lecture, we looked at the largest infrastructure that could be possible, which are large dams and irrigation networks. In today's lecture, we'll be looking at the smaller brother of the dam. Hopefully, it is not much different, but just the size is different. Let's take a look. So we are looking at check dams for this lecture. What you see here is, you can see people walking on the check dams. Whereas in the large irrigation project I mentioned, you cannot walk on top. There is, there is really um, security issues that you cannot even go near to that uh, wall of the dam, the, the storage structure of the dam. Whereas here you see people happily walking on top and going around. So this is more like a localized small size dam and those are called check dams and there are multiple multiple designs first let's look at the check dam but in before that i would like to also talk about the areas that are above and below the dam the area above the dam is called the catchment area whereas below it is called the command area where the water is going to be Given. So this is your dam, be it check dam or, or large dam. And then you have a catchment area on top. This is where the water is caught and then stored so that you could release the water later. Okay. Even though it says check dams and reservoir, those terms are kind of uh, used and misused uh, in, in uh, literature. But reservoirs are larger dams and check dams which are placed on the top, you could see, are smaller dams. Each check dam will have its own command area, very small uh, command area at the bottom and a catchment area on the top. Okay, Let's use different colors. So where uh, the uh, water is going to be caught is called the catchment area. So this is the catchment area of the check dam. For the big dam, this is the catchment area. Okay, so it is that area above that point where water will drain and come into the storage. Then water is used below the dam for irrigation. So that is a small, more a smaller area or it depends on the crop, etc. I'm just drawing uh, because of the space, but it could be any design, any um, shape. Whereas the catchment area is normally a watershed uh, shape, fern leaf or a leaf shape, okay? So the command area is where the water is released and given for irrigation through canals, river networks and other water bodies. So let's look at the specifics of check dams. Again, there's a lot of government assets, books on these, uh, I've given you the links. Uh, please go ahead and look at it because these are very, very important for rural water resource management. Not only for groundwater, not only for surface water, but it gives a holistic picture of capturing water, storing water, and then slowly releasing it to the downstream communities. What is a check dam? It is an engineered structure across the stream network. It is 
not parallel, perpendicular to the flow of the stream, river, etc. If it becomes a large river, then it becomes a dam. Okay, so just think about the size. You're not concentrating on a big river, maybe small, small rivers and river networks, stream networks. It is possible. These are also low cost. You don't need to clear the land. Okay. So how does it differ from a dam? Check dams are smaller in length and built across secondary stream networks, while dams are considered along major rivers. As I mentioned, major, please underline. If you go to the Ganges River, uh, those who are uh, from the, the that area, you would see the river is along more than a kilometer width. How do you build a check dam? You cannot. And that is where water is being stored in big, big uh, dams and then released in uh, the South Kaveri and other stuff. Less downstream impact compared to the dam. Uh, luckily, I have a figure which has both the large dam and the small dam, check dam in one image. You could see the C is a check dam and this is the large dam. What it says is there is less downstream impact. When you block water, when you're blocking the water, downstream there is no water. Okay. As a result, you are kind of stopping the water which is due downstream and then storing it in your large dams. Whereas the check dam, Yes, you're storing water. However, the volume is very small. So sometimes water fills and then overgoes and then goes to the next check dam or downstream. You can see that is what is happening here. Okay, so the water is coming and then there's a check dam. Oops, there's a storage and then it goes down another storage and then goes down. So you're not actually drying down this area. Whereas in a dam, this area would be totally dry no water where this dam is being filled up. There are uses for it. They want to create the level up so that they can draw hydropower. It's called maintaining a head or a, or a elevation of the water so that when water falls, it can be used for uh, your uh, hydropower. Whereas check dams normally you don't use for hydropower. It is mostly for water recharge, irrigation, lift irrigation, etc. It is less costly small size, therefore less costly. You don't have to uh, clear the land. So all this land would have been cleared because the water is inundating the area. So let's think about it for a second. You have all this as a forested area, okay? Initially, before, before the dam was constructed, all this was a forested area. And then what you do is when you make the dam, this water front would be inundated, which means water would be filling up. When water fills up, those land cannot have any vegetation. It suffocates, the plants will suffocate and die. So it is better to clear them off and then make it more uh, storage. Like you take out the soil, take out the rock so that water can be stored. So basically you clear the land, take out the soil and rock so that water can store more volume. Whereas in check dam, no, you don't do that. You just make, maybe you clear the sides a little bit so that the bank is stable. You could see they have done some work here. Uh, and then you, and then you uh, also uh, deepen this part. So the deepening a little bit to store water. Otherwise it doesn't make sense to have a uh, check dam in a high elevation, right? So this is also a decentralized versus centralized approach. Whereas uh, a decentralized means it is not one dam for everyone. So that is the large irrigation project, a centralized approach, okay? Centralized heating, centralized AC we call, right? So an air conditioner, which is for the entire floor, it's called centralized air conditioning, theater, a movie theater, for example. But when you call decentralized, then the hallway need not be ac but you have each room in the office, uh, each in a, in a floor, each room can have air conditioner, its own small air conditioner that is decentralized. So here, what we say in the dam is the large dam would store all the water and then release it to many, many acres of land. That is centralized approach. In a decentralized, every small acre would have its own check dam and that water would be used only for that acre. Okay, so as I said um, in the drawing, this area, okay, the command area, which is going to be here, 
all the area would be given the water from the centralized dam. Whereas in the Czech dam, it's only the small area which will get benefit, the small area which will get benefit. So you could see that instead of putting one dam and having all the area irrigated by one dam, you're breaking it into smaller pieces and giving it a small area of influence. Now, this is easier to maintain because people, power, etc., is easier if you have a decentralized for water. Otherwise, the controlling agent would be sitting on one end of the watershed, whereas people are fighting for water on the other end. So that uh, you know, distance is, is a big problem. Check dams and associated benefits. Let's look at the uh, check dams and their benefits does not require relocation of people. As I said, when the big dam is filling up, all the areas on the side, the houses have to be removed because the water will be full. Um, and so in the check dam, nothing. You just have to clear the sites and then the in-stream. Does not require clearing of land. You're not going to clear the land and then make the dam. Less considerable negative impact. Negative is uh, more subjective and it depends on who uses it uh, but um, here overall negative is less in a check dam because you don't clear the ecosystem you don't clear the forest or vegetation so the birds animals everything still remains whereas in a big dam all of those have to be cleared community-based uh, solutions uh, check dams are community-based because as i said decentralized means it has less uh, water uh, less number of people benefiting, but those people would be happy to maintain the check. Easier to manage due to the size. Again, the size is very, very small compared to large dams, and that gives them a very good uh, way of managing it, more freedom and less people. For example, for large dam, you need a big agency to maintain it, whereas a check dam, uh, every week one house can maintain it you know they just go and check so like here you could see uh, they're just checking the dam the wall on the sides etc and most probably everyone would be uh, using it for the daily activities also like washing bathing fishing whereas in a large dam you don't see those kind of activities localized benefits the benefits are visual uh, you can see it local people would enjoy and they then understand that they should manage it. Whereas in a large irrigation dam, you don't know how, uh, for example, in Pune, water is being stored and it can be sent to Mumbai for use. Would Mumbai people know about these dam and the areas? They may not know. Uh, whereas if it is a check dam, a smaller tank, for example, that is a decentralized, a small tank within Mumbai and people are getting water from that, they would know about the tank. So that is where, Localized benefits help in getting ownership and also benefits of the water to the people. It is a decentralized approach. I have uh, spoken a lot about this, so I would move on. Let's look at the operations of check dams. Stores runoff in smaller volumes. Let's quickly look at what did we say as runoff. You have precipitation on a land, okay? Some precipitation is happening. Part of it goes in as infiltration, part of it goes as percolation into the groundwater aquifers, plants uptake is there. Whatever remains, which is a big amount, will go as runoff. In most systems, the runoff is the biggest component of the rainfall. When you bring rainfall into different compartments, your runoff is the biggest factor because all the others processes is much slower than the rainfall rate. Whereas runoff is much faster. It can be faster than the rainfall, thereby giving you uh, ease of movement of water. Water wants to move. It doesn't want to stay in one location uh, because of law of physics, it has to flow from high to low potential. Age in recharging radially the groundwater aquifers in the vicinity of the check dams. Okay, uh, so what it means here is the check dams, uh, for example, you have a river in blue color for a river. You have a river and then you put a check dam. Okay. There is a check dam. So radially the influence of the uh, 
uh, check dam is felt in the groundwater. This is radially. Okay. It depends on how the aquifer is, what type of rock, soil, water content, etc. But uh, most probably the lateral movement of recharge from the check dam, water would be moving uh, and actually contributing to groundwater recharge. Most probably it will. Why? Because initially the river was flowing. Okay, so the water level may be at the same level of the groundwater. But now, because you're ponding it up, the level rises in the check dam. And because of the level rise, the water is at a high potential compared to the groundwater, which is at a low potential. So water would move from the check dam into the groundwater. But also all these would depend on, is there space for the water to move? Uh, is, is it empty, unsaturated, etc. Age in increasing soil moisture near the check dam. Because it is re uh, recharging to the groundwater, in the process, the soil moisture also gets recharged. So initially, it is the soil moisture, uh, depending on the depth of groundwater recharge. Or if it is moving in the seepage, in the depth of the groundwater, it can move in the soil moisture profile because of plant uptake, etc. Mostly built by local agencies on a low it is very, very um, um, low compared to the irrigation dams, uh, wherein uh, you don't have to have a lot of rules and regulations, except some permissions are needed. Uh, so the local agencies can build these check dams after they get some clearances. You don't have to have big, for example, economic clearances, impact assessments that you need in the um, irrigation dams. For small check dams, normally it is the people who uh, have to talk to the low downstream communities and also to the people who actually uh, manage the water body, CWC, PWD, or those kind of agencies, and then get permission and do it on a low budget. As I said, uh, it is gives you the freedom to use any material you want. Uh, it could be done by wood, it could be done by uh, bricks, uh, sandstone, uh, mud, uh, rocks. Uh, so the budget is low. You don't have to worry about it. Whereas in a dam, large dam, it has to have the dam clearances, safety inspections. Uh, the thickness of the wall should be uh, appropriate. Uh, so there's a lot of issues because once it breaks, all the downstream communities are washed away. Whereas in a check dam, not much uh, uh, disaster happens. You don't see disasters by check dam failure. You see that in the large dam failures. Maintenance is not built into the budgets. As we looked at the issues before this class in the last week, uh, the major issue is people don't maintain it. So it concerns, it's a big concern because it is your property in terms of it is a you are the major stakeholder, you're the major benefiter. Why are you not maintaining it is the question. So we've looked at multiple answers to this question. Uh, most importantly, they don't know that if they're allowed to manage the water, manage the check dam, because the flowing river, they never managed. And that they know that that is their water, they go and take in, et cetera. But they don't manage the river, it was a natural system. It just flows and then suddenly one day the river will wake up and she thinks I should move in a different direction. It will move in a different direction, like the Ganges. But check dam is like a structure and it involves money, even though it is low budget. For villages, it might be a big budget. So that is where the maintenance is not built into the budgets. May lead to siltation upstream of the check dams. So where the check dam is there, for example, there's a check dam right in this point. When water is blocked, then this area can also have sedimentation. This we can see in the large dam also. So the physics doesn't change between the size of the dam. Okay, so you have water flowing and then a dam which is actually stopping your uh, water. Because your water is uh, flowing in this way, for example, and then it goes like this. When it comes to this part, the water slows down. So all the sediments and rocks and pebbles that it carries is deposited before the check dam. This is a common thing because the velocity was enough to carry it. Now the velocity is slow, so 
the materials drop. So materials drop down here, okay? And that leads to sedimentation. Once this is not clear, then water will go over the check dam. There's no point of storing the water. So that is what nature is. You can try to stop it and curb it, but if you don't maintain and accept the power of nature, she will just run through your check dam or large dam, anything. So you have to be very careful about nature. May lead to less downstream flow and associated impacts on aqua, uh, agriculture and aquatic life. Even though you are making a small section of water storage, still it is a water, right? So you have to accept that yes, down people would have lesser water than before and the impact could be on agriculture and aquatic life. For example, the fish. The fish need water, flowing water to lay eggs. Uh, and if it is not there, then it is a problem. Um, insects, all these things are tied in the ecosystem. So it is better to understand and then build these check dams. Anyway, any, any non-natural infrastructure will have impact on agriculture and nature. Anything, your road, for example, uh, has to have an impact on the land and the nature. Any engineered product will have an impact. That is why if you see tribals, they don't, they practice agriculture and uh, associated things in one piece of land. Then they move to another land. They don't own the land. They'll just go to another land and then they um, start agriculture. So the old land will re, uh, recuperate or bounce back in to a forest. So this we don't do because we are engineering the land. Okay. So still there is less downstream to uh, flow that comes down. So you have to be careful. In the previous uh, figure, we saw that there is um, this previous figure. Here you could see that if everyone is stopping the water in the up check dams then water won't come down into the reservoir, right? Slowly, I'm saying. If one check dam is 1,000 liters, okay, just for example, I'm saying, and your big dam is 50,000 liters, you build 50 tanks, 50 check dams above the major uh, dam or the dam, you won't get any liter of water in the dam, right? Because you're already decentrally holding the water and only less water would come down into the reservoir. For example, only this area rainfall will contribute to the water, whereas all the other check dams are big and storing the water. So this understanding is needed to uh, talk to communities about uh, dams, any dams, large or small check dam. The only positive is it is less, much, much less compared to a large dam. Um, but uh, if you can share the profit, make some aspects for aquatic life and agriculture, then it is a very good method to store water and use it for lean season, non-monsoon season agriculture. Um, as I said, these uh, check dams have been proved uh, worthy in many, many areas. However, you have to do considerable estimations of the properties before you assess if they work. Check dams, as I said, have been highly beneficial in many Indian regions, in fact, across the world. Uh, many people have seen rivers getting back to life because of check dams, because initially the water would flow through the river and gone. Only three months, the water would be in the river. But now, since you slow down the river water through check dam, uh, you are seeing the water flow annually. Every day in the year, it will flow. This brings a lot of happiness to the people around because they used to see this water flow every day. Okay, so the Narmada, Tapti, and all these uh, rivers uh, in the northeast, north and regions were used to flow uh, fully. There's a river called Vaigai in Madurai, which used to flow every single day. If you go there, it is like a kilometer width, more than a kilometer. But then now there's no water because uh, things have changed, climate change, etc. Uh, water use, uh, water abuse capacities, etc. But now, if the water is slowly, slowly released into the Vaigai, it will it will start to flow again. 
What are the benefits of the check dam? As I said, there are many benefits. Let's look at some. The lift irrigation scheme is a, is a big hit in the check dams because you're storing the water, you're creating a pond, a thickness of water at the check dam, and now you can put a pump and remove it for the agriculture. Because recharge groundwater can take time, whereas this kind of activity can um, at once take the water and prevent evaporation loss, recharge loss, and apply it to the field. There is some energy component needed because you are using a pump, but uh, farmers have uh, the money to do it if they want to have a product, uh, an agricultural productivity. The most important thing you need to understand here is, can you do this in a flowing water? Yes, but we don't know if actually the water would be there throughout. Whereas in a check dam, you pond the water and you see the water, okay, I have this much volume of water, now I can pump it up. So you know how to better control the pumps and also irrigation area, whereas in a running thing, you cannot. Now, this is a, the NM Sadhguru uh, Foundation, which is an NGO in Dahod, Gujarat. Uh, I've been there multiple times to see the wonderful work they do. Uh, they bring communities together. These land were not agriculture uh, productivity at all. There was no water, very less rainfall. Uh, and water doesn't flow from check dam to the land because the land is high elevation, the check dam is low elevation. So you need a pump water up, which is highly energy intensive. One farmer cannot do it. But if the community joins together, that's what this foundation has shown. If the community joins together, then they can collectively work to pump the water and spread it for agriculture. So look at this, 10 community lift irrigation schemes were installed in one year. That's pretty big. Uh, what they do is they pump the water, bring it to a central um, location, and from there they channelize it to different farmers. Okay, uh, and from here also they can pump to different different uh, elevations. But most importantly, this storage can be used to spare send water to each and every field. NM Sangul Foundation is in Dahod, Gujarat. Um, please look at this link if you would like to get in touch. Uh, they have good training programs for people who are interested and they can take it up. It's an NGO, so it's not for profit. Uh, lift irrigation from a check dam. So this is how the schematic works. You have the water in the check dam. You have a pump house, as you've seen in this diagram. This is the pump house. Uh, and then you pump it into a reservoir or a smaller uh, tank where water is stored. And from there, you disperse it to the field. So there is some power and uh, cost for lifting the water, the pipes, etc. Uh, but this NGO would give money uh, for 10 years uh, and then later they say, okay, I will build it. Uh, you manage it. The, the farmers should manage it and then uh, if you want, you can increase the area of acreage. 401 community lift irrigation schemes executed. And this is how, as I said, the distribution point, these are called. Uh, so from one check dam, the water goes to this distribution point and every farmer can now manage the water. Also, it's making it easy for the farmers to get the water. And this has also been done by the uh, government of India schemes, especially the MG Narega. Under the MG Narega, there is the NRM, Nat uh, Natural Resource Management. And under the NRM, there is a lot of budget for water resources, almost 75% of NRM budget. Then what they do they do is mostly they do check taps. Okay, you can see here, they do ponds, small, small ponds, which are not connected to a river or a stream. Farm ponds and ponds are not connected. So along the river, the biggest investment is a check dam where they uh, stop the water and then from there, they spread the water. If you look at budgets also, compared to ponds and farm ponds, check dams are pretty expensive compared because ponds and farm ponds are small. There's no machinery involved, etc. Whereas check dams are running water. And we have dug wells, embankments, etc. So there's lots and lots of um, assets, we call them. These are each one of the assets have been created because of the positive impact on the farmer's livelihood, rural livelihood. It's also used for drinking, for washing, bathing, all I said, right? The check dams store the water. People go there for fishing, take water for drinking uh, or, or cleaning the vessels. Um, in rivers and stuff, you would see in, in villages, it's the same water for everything, okay? Uh, they boil it, maybe they filter it, but uh, at the end of the day, the water is good for them. 
Um, they've been doing this for a lot, lot of years, a lot of generations, I would say. Uh, the, the impurities are very less. So here you could see in Maharashtra where the locations are, uh, some locations like Latur has less, but others have a lot of check dams. So the benefits of check dams uh, have been studied um, very, very uh, explicitly and detailed uh, in many, many literature. Let's look at this study. Uh, this study used remote sensing uh, to look at, has the check dam improved the condition of soil water uh, and the groundwater recharge. This was in a location in Gujarat, um, same Dahod location. And you could see that the number of check dams increased from 1990 to 2015. So from zero to, uh, or three to 52. Uh, and then all these areas are the basin boundaries where the check dams are placed. And you could see that uh, in, a north, in a year where the rainfall is comparable, same rainfall, 1991, 2017, the rainfall is almost the same, but you could see that the NDWI, which is an indicator of water in the soil, um, uh, is higher in 2017 after the installation of 52 check dams. You could see here, all these uh, areas are turning into uh, yellow. And, and uh, if it is positive, high number of positive means it is more water is available. You can see all the red is converting into uh, yellow or orange and these uh, pockets are coming up where water is there. So there is a radius of influence, but overall these check dams have improved the water because from here they take the water out and recharge the entire area. There is lift. So uh, with this, I would conclude today's uh, lecture. We looked about check dams and how they are useful. I would meet you in the next lecture with another engineered infrastructure for rural water management. Thank you.